Hello everyone, welcome back to this series called Finance Current Affairs, where we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before I move on to the first question, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, then please do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that whenever a new video comes up, you can be notified about the same. If you want the free PDFs of these sessions, then you can join our Telegram group. The link is in the description below. Now let's move on to the first question which says, which of the following is not part of SARC Regional Intergovernmental Organization of South Asian countries? So you would be aware about the concept of regional economic integration. SARC is basically an example of the regional economic integration. So it comprises of different countries, different South Asian countries that have come up together, they cooperate, they have a mutual understanding and they try to remove the trade and the uh, different trade barriers, different tariff, non-tariff barriers in order to improve the relations among the nations, in order to handle the conflicts, in order to ensure better growth, better development of these nations. So we have to identify that which of these is not a part of that SARC group. So SARC is basically uh, comprising of eight different countries. Why I'm discussing about SARC? That's because on 8th of December, we observe the SARC Charter Day. What, that, what do I mean by SAC Charter Day? On this very day, the Charter of SAC was signed among these nations and they agreed to adhere to certain, certain principles, certain arrangements among themselves. All right. So SAC Charter has different articles which deals with different objectives, different principles, different arrangements which these countries have agreed upon. This year, we had the 37th anniversary of this very group. So this was the news. From here, I wanted to discuss about SARC. Before coming to SARC, let's discuss a bit about regional economic integration. What is it all about? Regional economic integration is basically an arrangement between the countries where countries agree that they will remove all sort of tariff and non-tariff barriers among themselves. When these tariff and non-tariff barriers are removed, then the trade relations among the countries improve, a mutual understanding uh, builds up and it becomes easier for these countries to together lead the world. All right. So, अलग अलग countries के बीच जब agreement होती है कि वो आपस में जो tariff non-tariff barriers हैं उन्हें remove करेगी, free mobility of factors allow करेगी, एक common type की policy follow करेंगे ताकि आपस में better cooperation हो, better trade relations हो, सब countries साथ में grow करें, develop करें, वो होता है regional economic integration. So we have different levels of these integration. One, one can be uh, least integrated with other countries or more, can have more high level of integration. So the most basic level of integration is to have a free trade agreement. Okay, the countries which belong to this free trade area, what happens among themselves is they reduce the tariff barriers which are imposed. So aapas mein countries jab tariff barriers remove kar deti hai ya reduce kar deti hai, then uh, that kind of an arrangement is a free trade agreement. Okay, so tariff barriers are basically when the taxes are imposed. So aapas mein aap kam taxes impose karo ge, to aapas mein aapka trade bade ga, aapke relations or improve ho ge. NAFTA is one of the examples. SAAP also has its free trade agreement called SAFTA. I'll be discussing about it. But coming to the next level of integration, that is customs union. Each next level of integration will have the features of the lower level plus an added feature. So customs union may be free trade area ke features hai, yani ki aapas mein members ke saath tariff barriers remove kiye jate hai ya reduce kiye jate hai. Plus an additional feature is to have a common, common external tariff. Among the nations, they will have uh, reduced taxes or removed tariff barriers. But among the other external partners, they will have a common tariff policy. Then coming to the common market, it will have the features of the below two levels plus an added feature of free mobility. That is, your capital, your services can move easily from one nation to the other. Next high level of integration is the economic union. Here what happens, what added feature is there? It's that of having a common monetary and fiscal policy. Aapas mein countries a common monetary or fiscal policy follow karti hai. Aur saath hi saath jo ye lower level ke features hai, ye bhi isme hote hai. To, taking an example, European Union is such an example. 
then the highest level of integration is political union here the countries have common political policies common government and it's very difficult to achieve such high level of integration so this was a bit about economic integration sark is an example of economic integration here some south asian nations have agreed फॉर रीजनल कॉपरेशन आपस में हम कॉपरेट करेंगे हम साथ में मिल के चलेंगे आपस में टैरिफ बैरियर्स रिमूव करेंगे और एक तरह से लीडिंग प्लेयर्स बनेंगे बनेंगे मार्केट में दैट्स द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ साक सो साक स्टैंड फॉर द साउथ एशियन एसोसिएशन फॉर रीजनल कॉपरेशन वेन द चार्टर वॉज साइंड देन दीज नेशन अग्रीड अपॉन कमिंग अप टूगेदर एंड इंश्योरिंग कॉपरेशन अमंग द नेशन अंडरस्टैंडिंग अमंग द नेशन सो विच एट नेशन एम आई टॉकिंग अबाउट they include india maldives nepal pakistan sri lanka afghanistan bangladesh and bhutan so ye eight nations ne milke agree kiya tha ki aapas mein hum log milke tariff barriers remove karenge apne uh, countries mein growth promote karenge development pe focus karenge logo ke welfare pe focus karenge so the objective was to ensure the welfare of people improve their quality of life and accelerate the economic growth so this charter has articles which deal with the objectives principle organization meetings and financial arrangement of sark moving ahead to the basic objectives of sark so the uh, charter states the objectives the objectives include promoting the welfare of people of south asia so in countries mein jo log hain unka welfare ho ye countries grow kare develop kare culturally develop kare social progress ho that's the objective then ensuring mutual trust understanding of one another's problem ek dusre ki problems ko samjhe unhe solve kare countries saath mein milke then strengthening the cooperation among the countries strengthening the cooperation among themselves in international forums in matter of common interest countries ne kahi internationally forums mein khud ko represent karna hai ek dusre ko support karengi ek dusre ke problems ko address karne ki koshish karengi so these are few objectives of this very regional grouping and the safta which stands for the south asian free trade area it's the uh, free trade agreement of sark where the saft it proposes abolishing all kinds of trade and tariff restrictions in the sark region so ye ensure karti hai ki sark region mein ye eight countries ke beech jo tariff restrictions hai trade related restrictions hai wo remove ho aur countries ke beech better trade ho better cooperation ho coming back to our question now so which of these is not a part of sark region Maldives is Nepal is Bhutan is Bangladesh is Nepal the Thailand is not one of the participating nations so answer is option C now coming to the second question it says which of the following is formerly referred to as the BRICS development bank which is a multilateral development bank operated by the BRICS states so first of all we have to discuss what is this BRICS all about then we will come to the question that which bank is no was formerly known as the brics development bank what role it has to play in the economy so before answering this question why i am discussing about brics and what is brics all about see brics is basically a grouping of some nations brazil russia india so these are the few nations which together form brics okay so if i talk about these nations we have brazil russia india china and south africa here we don't have a kind of a formal agreement among the countries like in case of sark and all here the countries are not participating as a formal group of organization but they cooperate among themselves through the annual summits so annually the summits are held where these countries agree to cooperate on certain terms and conditions so these are some leading economies some emerging economies of the world why i wanted to discuss about brics that's because recently something was there related to brics on the rbi website rbi came up with the brics economic bulletin 2021 it was placed on the rbi website recently what was that bulletin all about see we all have faced the problem of the pandemic economies have done a lot the central banks have done a lot so how these brics nations have uh, faced this pandemic what they have done how they are recovering all that has been discussed in detail in this very bulletin according to this what has been concluded is that india is having a really very good recovery phase and india's growth after the slowdown is projected to be even better than the other member nations this is what this bulletin says 
So this is prepared by a research group where you have members from the central banks of these countries. So some of the members from RBI's end have also participated in preparing this bulletin. What was the theme of this bulletin? It was navigating the ongoing pandemics, pandemic, the BRICS experience of resilience and recovery. So ye BRICS countries ne kaise face kiya hai pandemic ko, kaise wo ek strong country ki tarah emerge huye hai and kaise wo recover kar rahe hai pandemic se, all that has been discussed in this very bulletin. Now, coming to the um, discussion on BRICS, so we have discussed it's a grouping of five nations. These countries account for around 40% of the world's population and 30% of the GDP. So, world ka major population or major GDP is in countries se aata hai. Is liye is liye alag grouping banai hai because it seems that it will emerge as the major investment market and a major global power block. Okay, so BRICS seeks to deepen, broaden and intensify the cooperation within the grouping for sustainable, equitable and mutually beneficial development. Aapas mein countries saath mein work kare taaki ek major global player wo ban sake, unki development ho, that's the objective of BRICS. So BRICS takes into consideration each member's growth, development and poverty objectives to ensure relations are built on countries economic strengths and avoid competition wherever possible. Sub countries apni apni strengths leke aaye, ek dusre ko support kare, poverty eradicate karne mein, growth ensure karne mein, development make sure karne mein, that's the basic objective of BRICS. Now, coming to the bank, which is which was formerly known as the BRICS Development Bank. So, on 15th July, the first day of BRICS 6th summit, they agreed upon establishing the new development bank. It was formerly called the BRICS Development Bank. This is a multilateral bank which BRICS nations operate. Karte hai. What's the basic role of this bank? Its objective was to ensure the financing, to basically ensure financing the infrastructure and sustainable development projects in BRICS and other emerging economies. So specifically, BRICS ko ye kafi support karte hai, financial support. Dete hai. They provide the financial support. This bank provides the financial support for the infrastructure development and the overall sustainable development. Not only to the BRICS nations, but also to other emerging economies, other developing countries as well. So it, it basically supports the efforts of different regional financial institutions toward global growth and development in countries. Mein, or just ko bhi ye support kar raha hai bank, unki development ho, growth ho, unko financial support karta hai, infrastructure develop karne mein help karta hai. So all that is the role of the new development bank. So if I move back to the question, now we know the answer. It's option B the new development bank now coming to the next question it says who has been appointed as the managing director and the chief executive officer of Ujjivan small finance bank so recently the Ujjivan small finance bank had appointed its md and the ceo for a period of around three years so who has been appointed as the md or the ceo the answer to this question is option a Itra Davis has been appointed as the chief executive and the managing director of this very bank. From here, I wanted to discuss about the small finance bank. What are small finance banks? So, uh, so Itra Davis has been appointed as the MD and CEO for three years. Prior to this, uh, this person was the CEO of the Ujjivan Financial Services and now has been appointed as the MD and the CEO of your small finance bank, the Ujjivan Small Finance Bank. What are small finance banks? How are they different from our normal commercial banks which operate in the market? So as the name suggests, small finance bank, they cater to a specific market, a smaller segment of the society. They are a specialized segment of banking created by RBI. And why RBI created this? In order to strengthen the concept of financial inclusion, to support the underserved, the unprivileged sections of the society by providing them with the basic banking activity. So specifically, ye, small groups of the market ko cater karta hai, jo unprivileged sections of society hai, underprivileged sections of society hai, unko financial support deta hai, unko banking services provide karata hai. Some of the examples include your MSMEs, small business units, marginal farmers or the unorganized sector at large. This bank undertake the basic banking activities such as lending and accepting the deposits just like other commercial banks, but specifically catered to the underserved and the unserved sections. 
सो ये लैंड करते हैं लोन्स प्रोवाइड करते हैं डिपॉजिट्स एक्सेप्ट करते हैं जैसे कि बाकी कमर्शियल बैंक करते हैं बट द डिफरेंस इज दैट रैदर देन केटरिंग टू अ लार्जर मार्केट दिस स्पेसिफिकली प्रोवाइड दिस लैंडिंग एंड एक्सेप्टिंग डिपॉजिट टू दी अंडर सर्व एंड अनसर्व सेक्शन ऑफ द सोसाइटी और राइट नाउ कमिंग टू द लास्ट क्वेश्चन विच से इज आइडेंटिफाई द स्टेटमेंट करेक्टली रिलेटेड टू द पेमेंट बैंक सो लेट्स डिस्कस वॉट आर पेमेंट बैंक हाउ आर द डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक एंड वॉट इज रिसेंटली न्यूज रिलेटेड टू दीज पेमेंट बैंक सो पेटीएम पेमेंट बैंक हैज बीन इंक्लूडेड इन द सेकेंड स्कड्यूल ऑफ द रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट एंड इज नाउ अ स्कड्यूल्ड पेमेंट बैंक so paytm payment bank ko rbi ke second schedule mein include kar diya gaya hai in one of the sessions recently i talked about the second schedule of rbi so the banks which are listed in this schedule are called the scheduled banks and they can get the support from rbi as and like if they want to take loans they can take that from rbi under various facilities that are offered by rbi okay they can participate in the auctions held by the government they can participate in the repos reverse repos get the benefit under the marginal standing facility from rbi as and they can uh, be eligible to partner in the government run financial inclusion programs so paytm payment bank has been given that approval so now talking about the payment bank and how they differ from the small finance banks so the payment bank is like another bank but operating on a smaller or a restricted scale so they also focus on financial inclusion and rather than operating for a larger market they also cater to some restricted market so how they differ from the small finance bank is that there is no credit risk involved that is these banks accept the deposits from the people but they don't give the loans okay so though they don't give the loans they don't issue the credit cards the objective is to ensure financial inclusion that is making sure that the financial services reach even the underserved unserved sections of the society at very affordable cost so how these banks do so they do so by providing the option of opening small savings accounts allow the remittance or remittance services to the migrant labor force labor workforce how and the low support the support the low income households and small businesses and other unorganized sector so ye bhi unorganized sector unserved underserved sections of society ko support karte hain unko option dete hain ki wo small savings bank account khol sake usme unko interest milega they can easily remit if they are migrant workers then they can easily remit their funds but these banks don't extend the loans that is the major area where they differ from the small finance banks दोनों ही स्मॉल सेक्शन ऑफ सोसाइटी को केटर करते हैं बट स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक लैंड टू देम बट पेमेंट बैंक कैन जस्ट एक्सेप्ट द डिपोजिट दे कैन नॉट लैंड सो दे वर अर्लियर अलाउड टू हैव डिपोजिट ऑफ अप टू वन लैख विच वॉज इंक्रीज टू टू लैख लेटर बट इफ आई टॉक अबाउट स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक दे कैन एक्सेप्ट द डिपोजिट ऑल्सो एंड दे कैन लैंड एज वेल पेमेंट बैंक कैन नॉट गिव द लोन दे कैन नॉट इशू द क्रेडिट कार्ड बट दे कैन गो फॉर ए टी एम कार्ड डेबिट कार्ड and if i talk about the small finance bank there is no such restriction on their area of operations so ye major point hai jisme ye dono type ke banks mein basically differ karte hain now coming back to our question we have to identify the correct statements so payment bank can receive deposits up to 2 lakh this is correct they cannot issue credit cards this is also correct but they can undertake banking activities like accepting deposits and lending this is incorrect they cannot lend okay so first and third are correct answer is option c that was all for today's session with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much